Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and today we're talking about Starship Progress for the week. We've seen a bunch of amazing new footage. It really is incredible just how much there is to continually cover here just with SpaceX alone. But on top of that, we're also talking about the amazing X-37B that SpaceX launched in 2017. What's exciting about it, you might ask? Well, the secret little military test vessel that has been in orbit for all this time this week has just returned. So yes, lots to talk about and explore today. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. More exciting news going on over the last week with the incredible Starship developments. The Mark 1 vessel at Boca Chica, Texas has been undergoing a bunch of work prior to it being moved off to the launch site. This massive crane is just a monster. I mean, check this thing out. You can see the tires on this beast screaming in pain. The maximum load capacity is 1200 metric tons. Anyway, you get the idea, right? It's big, and it's been having a busy few days this week at the Texas site. Preparations were going on early in the week, preparing for the move of the lower sections of the Starship to the launch pad. Now, shortly after, SpaceX transported the Mark 1 prototype half down to the launch pad for the first time ever. You can see this footage here of all of this in action. They've basically stacked the vessel segment up onto the roll lift transporter here and then carefully just rolled it down the road. Nice footage here of it passing by the star hopper and then beside the platform to be hoisted up by the gigantic crane and then placed down onto the stand here. Now this likely means we're going to see some exciting new rounds of testing coming soon as this is the main business end of the vessel, right? This is where the Raptor engines will be mounted uh, and where the main fuel tanks are contained. Pretty exciting to see this largest component of the vessel rolling down the road, but we're not overly sure how far away the top half is going to be before it joins the lower section at the launch pad. I suspect a great deal of work is still needing to be done on the top half before it's going to be ready to be fully stacked again like we saw it last month. Certainly a long way from the time frames that was mentioned by Elon in his presentations though. His thoughts were that we'd be close to seeing the vessel flying by now. The current estimates seem to be suggesting that we won't see the full test flight now until December, uh, although there may well be some interesting smaller tests in the meantime. There's quite a bit of speculation going on right now, um, suggesting that the main reason for the move was to begin performing leak and pressure tests of Starship's propellant tanks. For all we know, we might even see a full wet dress rehearsal, which is essentially a test where the tanks are fully fueled with liquid methane and liquid oxygen, uh, and then a mock countdown would occur to see how everything looks prior to doing any real static fire tests. What do you think though? What's the main reason SpaceX has chosen to move the lower half of the vessel now? And what tests do you think maybe might be coming up first? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now just because most of the action has been in this move, that doesn't mean the upper half has been sitting idly by. There is still a huge amount going on inside the vessel near the nose area here. The Starship in Florida, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have had a great deal of obvious progress going on from the outside. This new drone footage by John Wincup is amazing as always, and I highly recommend following and supporting John's efforts here, as he is posting this footage quite regularly now. Um, sadly, I suspect a great deal of the interesting work at Florida is all hidden away within sheds and covered areas. Uh, although we've not seen wings to be mounted on the vessel yet, they could all quite literally be sitting inside ready to go on very soon. It's kind of hard to say. Regardless, there is loads going on with SpaceX just from Starship alone. There's news to come very soon now with the upcoming Crew Dragon in-flight abort test. We've seen some nice footage lately from SpaceX there in preparation of that mission. And also this cool tweet here from SpaceX the other day showing us how they are installing the Super Draco engines, which will be powering Crew Dragon's launch escape system for the first mission with NASA's space astronauts on board. Recently at an investor conference, Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's president, said that once SpaceX is flying Starship regularly, the vessel will be able to launch close to seven times as many Starlink satellites than what we saw on the last Starlink launch. So rather than 60 satellites, we're now talking around 400 in a single launch. A launch, I might add, that will be far cheaper than the current Falcon 9 given the full reusability design of the Starship. Elon Musk estimates that the 
Starlink project itself could generate more than 30 billion per year, at least 10 times what SpaceX could bring from its current launch services. This is a big deal and one that will potentially change the architecture of SpaceX's business quite dramatically. Look at what SpaceX have done over the last decade with their current budgets and then imagine what they could do with 10 times that. The next Starlink launch should be coming soon as well, so do make sure you're staying up to date with that as well. I've got an interesting video here talking about the latest news in that area. And while you're here, please do consider subscribing because the space industry right now is moving extremely rapidly and I'd love to share it all with you. So remember way back to September 2017 when we watched SpaceX launch the Orbital Test Vehicle 5 mission with the awesome little X-37B unpiloted space plane on board? Well, it's been up there now in orbit for 780 days, which is now the fifth ultra-long mission for the fleet the military has created. The X-37B mission was finalized with a very smooth-looking touchdown at the shuttle landing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Now, this is an achievement worth talking about as this mission has broken the previous mission record, which was 718 days. This was the Orbital Test Vehicle 4 mission sent up on an Atlas V in May of 2015. So yes, they've broken broken that record by over 60 days. Pretty impressive stuff. Now whenever I've talked about the X-37B in the past, there's always been a bit of criticism in the comments, primarily with conspiracy theories about what the vessel is actually doing up there. And this is the thing, right? The missions are classified. In fact, when SpaceX did the launch of the OTV-5 mission, the video feed for the second stage was not even shown to the public. We just got to watch the typical booster landing, which was impressive. Uh, but because the public doesn't really know what the military is doing up there, it's kind of a natural progression for the conspiracy theorists to comment on alien cover-ups and the hidden technology and all this sort of thing. So, you know, the official US Air Force statement is that the project is an experimental test program to demonstrate technologies for a reliable, reusable, unmanned space test platform for the US Air Force. I mean, primarily what they want to do is develop this reusable spacecraft technology and run automated experiments that can be returned to Earth. Some of the motivation from a military perspective I'm sure would be similar to some of SpaceX's goals. They want to reduce the cost of access to space by utilizing reusable technology and we can be fairly certain that they are researching any opportunities possible from a strategic point of view that would benefit the United States military and government in a number of ways. It is nice to see a little action still from a space plane as we haven't seen any other vessels of this nature flying since the shuttle retired back in 2011. I'm just a big fan of this cute little vessel. It essentially evolved from the earlier X-40 vehicle which was really just a test glider prototype. The X-37B is around 120% larger than that though measuring in at around 29 feet uh, or around 9 meters in length. Not a huge vessel by any measure but it is light and as far as I'm aware it's still the smallest and lightest orbital space plane ever flown with a launch mass of around 5 metric tons or 11,000 pounds. Now compared to the space shuttle, uh, this thing is a baby. It's only around one quarter of the size. So uh, yes, yeah, great news that the mission has been successful, uh, you know, whatever that may have been. And it is awesome news that SpaceX has been involved as we, you know, all hope to see more military funding provided to SpaceX for future missions. On top of all this news, I've been having a great chat back and forward with Felix from What About It. Uh, recently, he published a super interesting video discussing Starship's power supply and what that could possibly be on its way to Mars. He took a realistic approach with this as well, leaving out um, any options that would really not be readily available. Uh, the goal really to find out what the first Starship would use to keep the lights on and he even speculates about SpaceX using solar arrays intended for the deployment on Mars to power the Starships in flight as well. So if you're looking for another space focused channel while patiently awaiting for my next upload, check Felix out. I've got a link in the description as well as popping up here in the top right. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, please do take a second and hit that like button. As always, a colossal thank you to my quality control squad shown here. I simply cannot do what I'm doing here without the support from you guys. And if you are interested in these topics yourself and would like to be involved in the growing community, follow my Discord or Twitter link in the description. 
In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video here talking about SpaceX's Mars plan with the Starships. Some pretty cool new information came out of the Mars Society convention the other week, so check that out. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.